Good afternoon, and dear friends, welcome back to church. Please know that we will continue to live stream the 5 p.m. Saturday Mass every weekend, and that all have dispensation to not attend Mass if you have any concerns. We will also be having daily Mass Tuesday through Friday at 9 a.m., which might be a smaller group of people and a Mass you could attend instead of a weekend Mass if you have any concerns. Please silence your cell phones if you are using our app to access the mass readings today on your phone or device. Today is the 14th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our celebrant today is actually Father Andy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and the Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters, it's great to be with you here on this 14th week of Ordinary Time, on also the 4th of July. And let us turn to the Lord as we begin this Holy Mask, Mass and ask God for pardon and peace for our sins. And Lord Jesus, you are the good shepherd. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you come to us in word and in sacrament. Christ, have mercy. And Lord Jesus, you are the way, the truth, and the life. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us into everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let us pray. O oh God, who in the abasement of your Son have raised up a fallen world, fill your faithful up with holy joy, for on those you have rescued from slavery to sin, you bestow eternal gladness through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, 
who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Zechariah. Thus says the Lord, Rejoice heartily, O daughter Zion. Shout for joy, O daughter Jerusalem. See, your king shall come to you. A just savior is he, meek and riding on an ass, on a colt, on a foal of an ass. He shall banish the chariot from Ephraim and the horse from Jerusalem. The warrior's bow shall be banished, and he shall proclaim peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial, I will praise your name forever, my King and my God. I will praise your name forever, my King and my God. I will extol you, O my God and King, and I will bless your name forever and ever. Every day will I bless you, and I will praise your name forever and ever. I will praise your name forever, my King and my God. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness, The Lord is good to all and compassionate toward all his works. I will praise your name forever, my King and my God. Let all your works give you thanks, O Lord, and let your faithful ones bless you. Let them discourse of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your might. I will praise your name forever, my King and my God. The Lord is faithful in all his words and holy in all his works. The Lord lifts up all who are fallen and raises up all who are bowed down. I will praise your name forever, my King and my God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, You are not in the flesh. On the contrary, you are in the spirit, if only the spirit of God dwells in you. Whoever does not have the spirit of Christ does not belong to him. If the spirit of the one who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, the one who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies too through his spirit that dwells in you. Consequently, brothers and sisters, we are not debtors to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. The word of the Lord. And my brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. At that time, Jesus exclaimed, 
I give praise to you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, for although you have hidden these things from the wise and learned, you have revealed them to the little ones. Yes, Father, such has been your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son wishes to reveal him. Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart, and you will find rest for yourselves. For my yoke is easy and my burden light. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. Hope you're all doing well today. Happy July 4th. A few years ago, I was doing an annual retreat, which I didn't take this year. Everything's a little bit out of sync this year. But I would always take an annual retreat in June, either in a place called Priestfield with the Archdiocese and retreat with a bunch of other priests, or I'd go to this place in Berryville, which is a a Trappist monastery in Virginia, and I would go with this one other priest, typically, oftentimes. Well, one year, I don't remember what year it was, we were having mass at this Trappist monastery in Clark County, Virginia, right on the Shenandoah River, just below uh, West Virginia border, and they were having mass and they had the same gospel as today the one we just heard where jesus is saying come come to me and if you find burdensome i will refresh you you will find rest for yourselves with me and i remember i don't remember what the priest said about the about the reading at mass but i do remember what i thought as i watched this old priest and that was this priest who was preaching took him about five minutes to get to the pulpit, and he was, looked like he was wincing, he used a walker, he was wincing, you know, three or four times with every step. He was in total pain as he got to that pulpit. And I remember this priest friend of mine whispers to me, you know, we were, we probably shouldn't have done it, but he said, I keep expecting that guy to fall. And that very day, right after Mass, everybody had gotten out of the uh, chapel except for my priest friend and I, and this uh, priest who was preaching, and a guy who was from Nebraska. I don't know why I remember that. (laughs) He was from Nebraska. But anyways, the guy, the priest, actually did fall. He took a hard fall on an area of the floor that was concrete. And then he just says to us, as he's laying on the floor, because we all ran over, he said, I didn't expect that to happen. But there he was, with his struggles, preaching to us about God helping us with our burdens and making our burdens, his burden was light, and we would find rest with him. Then right after that, I went to the monastery gift shop. Anyone ever seen the Trappist jams and breads and fruitcake and stuff? Well, that was all on sale. And uh, uh, even though I'm cheap, I would always buy all the staff members, wherever I worked, jam. That would be my little thing after coming back from retreat. Everybody would get a rhubarb strawberry jam or something like that. Well, I'm at the cash register, and there's another monk. And, you know, Trappists, you you might not know it, but they're supposed to be silent most of the time. He spent like 20 minutes telling me his woes. (laughs) He didn't even know I was a priest, although he probably guessed it because I, you know. And he just goes, I'm tired, as he's putting the jam into bags or boxes for me. And and I said, well, that's because you monks get up too early because they have prayer at 3.30 in the morning. Can you imagine that? I think it's 2 a.m. at some Trappist places. I wouldn't put up with that. But anyway, (laughs) he started going on and on about the head monk working him too hard and that the head monk didn't understand he was getting older, and he really did go on and on. I'm not exaggerating. I stood there for 20 minutes, and one other woman started to pick through the books later, and I was a little worried that 
you know, she'd get annoyed with us because we were, I was standing at that register so long. And I didn't say that, well, I thought Trappers were supposed to keep silent. <laughs> I figured he needed someone to listen. But anyway, all that happened right at that Mass or right after the Mass where we had contemplated how Jesus had told us, come to me, all you who find life burdensome, and I will refresh you, for I am meek and humble of heart, and you will find rest for yourselves. Well, again, at that same Mass, there was one monk who preached on the rest Jesus gives us who literally fell and hit the concrete floor and had a hard time getting up and was grimacing every time he moved. And then there was another monk who was bearing his soul to a complete stranger about his troubles and how tired he was. So maybe the ailing monk and the tired monk helped me to see today that Jesus was not saying that if I pray to Jesus, that God will make my life burden-free. I don't think he's saying that. But if he's not, what is Jesus trying to tell us today by, telling, uh, by saying to us, I will give you rest? That if we follow him, he will give us rest. What's he, trying, what's he trying to tell us? Well, what do I know? I'm just a goofy guy. I know I dress up in these clothes, and I was ordained. I really was. But I sometimes wonder about these deep questions, and I'm not saying I have all the answers. But in my humble, hopefully humble opinion, I think Jesus is trying to help us in the way that is illustrated by the following story. And it was about when I, I was a senior in high school, and it was a challenging time. It was like January of my senior year in high school, and I had had my first real girlfriend, and around Christmas time, we had broken up, and she told me her family was moving to Oregon, to Eugene, Oregon. And I was living in Virginia. And then my best buddy, who I had been glued to since the eighth grade, he got very involved with a girlfriend and really wasn't available, I realized, after a while at all. He didn't want to get together. And then our family had moved the summer after my junior year to Manassas into this old house that uh, didn't have any air conditioning and it didn't have any central heating. <laughs> There was ice one morning in the bathtub. The water had been left in the bathtub. There was ice in the bathtub. And I kind of, I grew to love that house. We restored it. But I was about 15 miles away from my, all my friends. And I had this $200 car that I kept glued together with scotch tape. And it was, I was just, I was always worried about, you know, driving that car around. On top of that, I loved running track and field and the season ended in early January, and it was, it was cold, and there was nothing to do, and I found myself bored. I did go working at, remember Dart Drug, anyone from Washington? I worked at Dart Drug from 5 to 9, 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. every night, and there was a Dolly Parton song, Working 9 to 5, that was out at that time. <laughs> so I'd always hum, Working 5 to 9, beep, what a way. And I do that. I did have some fun. But other times, I was just... I began to get a little bit sad, and I'd lay in bed and just be sad. And I remember one day, after like two weeks of this, it occurred to me to go talk to my father. And typically, he was downstairs in the living room smoking a pipe and yelling at whatever sports were on TV. That's where you could find him when he wasn't at work. But he was all ears, all ears when I told him how I was feeling and the look on his face when I looked so upset, he just smiled at me because he always liked me. And he laughed and he assured me that I was gonna be all right. And I still remember how much better I felt after I remembered he was in my corner and he loved me after I saw the look on his face. And so today, maybe that story reminds me of how God gives us rest. He doesn't protect us from all the troubles. But in a way, our faith helps us to see that God loves us, that there's a look of love on God's face for us as well. He gives us the Eucharist, which is closer than an embrace, and the sacraments, teaches us how to pray, teaches us the stories about God and the, and the scriptures. And all of this reminds us that God is in our corner like my dad was in my corner 
years ago. And also remembering the saints as part of our tradition, as part of that getting the rest of God, getting God's rest. Because when we remember that the saints love us and pray for us, when we remember we're always part of a family, we're part of a family that loves us, all the saints, all the heavenly host, all of them, they're all praying for us and they love us. And it's like they are also in our corner, like my dad was years ago. And so today we recall the love of the Lord to quiet ourselves down and to remember we are loved over and over and over again. Every time we receive the Eucharist, closer than an embrace or pray where God's right by our side and we're surrounded by a cloud of witnesses or read the Bible, which is the, the stories of how God has interacted with his people. And I do think it can make a difference, like me going downstairs to talk to my dad when I was 17, to be reminded that I was loved and that I was not alone in facing my troubles. So that going to Mass and receiving the Eucharist and reading the Bible and praying are like going and talking to someone who really loves us, to who's going to assure us that it's going to be okay, like my dad did for me when I was 17. And also, that if we love our lives, trying to share the love of God with others, trying to help those in need through kindness and service, well, if we try to do that, God will also bring us his peace, like a father or a mother comforting their child. And so, to sum up, as we hear Jesus today say, come to me and I will give you rest, what I don't hear after I think about those two monks, one who fell, one who was tired and frustrated, was that if I ask Jesus to do it, he will take away my problems and make my life problem-free. But what I do think Jesus means in Matthew 11 today when he says, come to me, all you who find life burdensome and I will refresh you. What I hear is that with the help of Jesus through prayer and the Eucharist and the scriptures and good people is that he's going to try to assure me that he's in my corner and God's people are in my corner and your corner and that we are loved and he wants to remind us that we're not alone despite our troubles and that if we try to follow him with our whole hearts and to love our neighbor as ourselves then we will find a real sense of peace and meaning and purpose despite our problems not that i won't feel pain at times in life not that i won't be at the end of my rope sometimes but he will give my life meaning and hope and he will enable me to love my life anyway if I try to remember that God's in my corner and God's people are in my corner, then I am loved. Reminded me of a book, I'm almost done, that I read called Our Lady of Cabejo. You ever heard of that book? It's an amazing story. Uh, uh, the Virgin Mary appeared in the African country of Rwanda for a few years, and Jesus also appeared uh, to uh, different individuals. There's a woman named Immaculate, She's become world-renowned for her books uh, about her own life and about Our Lady of Cabejo, the appearances, because she saw a lot of those appearances. She lost every single member of her family, a huge extended family, all gone because of warfare in her country. But she now lives in the United States, and she has the strongest Catholic faith you could ever have. She crisscrosses, especially she was supposed to speak, uh, at a church like 10 miles from here before the COVID happened. She crisscrosses the United States preaching her message of faith and love and peace and reconciliation to anyone who will hear it. She found her rest in the Lord despite an extreme situation. God never protected her from all the problems in life or the world, but she found her rest. She, would re she was reminded by her faith that she had value and that she has, had, has, lo has love in her life so that she could get through the tough times and build up a new life. 
And I think that's what Jesus promises us today. So let's remember that God and the, and the saints love us in the midst of our troubles through the Eucharist and the scriptures and prayer. And let's find meaning in life through sharing that love with all we meet because Christ wants to give us rest in our hearts. We're going to stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, for him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit. Lord, the giver of life. resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. And brothers and sisters, let us offer our prayers. That Catholics would always strive to build up welcoming parishes and a welcoming church where the weary and the burdened will find rest, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear us. us. For government leaders to work for peace on behalf of all people, who are living in the midst of war or terrorism, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear us. For all of our parishioners who have recently lost a loved one, may they find comfort in the presence of the Lord and the love of the Christian community, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear us. For all of our parishioners who are homebound or in institutions, may we reach out to them to assure them of God's love especially during this time of COVID-19, when so many are isolated, we pray. Lord, hear us. For parents of young children in our parish, may they find the time for their faith in the midst of their busy lives, we pray. Lord, Lord hear us. For our nation, as we have just celebrated our Independence Day, may we be grateful to live in our nation and inspired to build it up to be the best it can be, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear us. us. For all the sick to know of the love of the Christian community, the prayers of the saints and the grace of the Lord, we lift up all those who are now being remembered in our oratory, the parish bulletin, and our prayer network, we pray. Lord, hear us. For those who have died, may they experience the love of God we remember Harry L. Taylor in a special way at this Mass, and those who have died in the past week, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear us. us. For all those prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray. Lord, hear us. And we ask all of these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen.
And pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May. May this oblation dedicated to your name purify us, O Lord, and day by day bring our conduct closer to the life of heaven, through Christ our Lord. And my brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels, We praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy and to be glorified O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love and when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures for us and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father, most merciful, we ask, that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the last supper, he took bread and said the blessing broke the bread and gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and gave you thanks and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood. The blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith when we eat this bread and drink this cup we proclaim your death O Lord until you come again therefore Holy Father as we celebrate the memorial of Christ your son our Savior whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection and whom you have seated at your right hand we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing look with favor on the oblation of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your son in whose body and blood we have of communion lord renew your church by the light of the gospel strengthen the bond of unity between the faithful and the pastors of your people together with francis our pope and william our bishop and the whole order of bishops that in a world torn by strife your people may shine forth as a prophetic sign of unity and concord remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever there in communion communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary mother of God with Blessed Joseph her spouse with the Apostles and martyrs and with all the Saints we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ your son for it is through him and with him and in him O God Almighty Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit all glory and honor is yours forever and ever amen and brothers and sisters let us pray as Jesus himself taught us our Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom And Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. With Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God. my brothers and sisters behold the Lamb of God 
Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, For those online, we're now going to do a spiritual communion. Lord Jesus, I believe you are fully present in the most blessed sacrament of the Holy Mass. While I cannot receive you physically at this time, I invite you to now to enter into my heart for a spiritual communion. Folks, for uh, handing out communion, a little different tonight. Uh, the wings are blocked up anyway. <laughs> so we're just going to, as you're coming down the center aisle, just make sure to keep that, you see where the tape is between people. Just keep that distance, and those on this side will go to Miss Jerry, and those on this side to me, okay? So just keep that distance between one another. It, it'll take a little longer, but we're at prayer. We're in God's house. We're in no hurry.
beautiful for spacious skies, for amber waves of a grain, for purple mountain majesties above the fruited plains. Amen. shining sea. Oh, beautiful for pilgrim's feet, whose stern impassioned distress, a thoroughfare for freedom beat across the Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that having been replenished by such great gifts, we may gain the prize of salvation and never cease to praise you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you to Jackie and Rick who just sang and played, and also Paul, who's back at the piano. We're very thankful. It's nice to hear a song, have a little bit of music. I can't wait till we can get back to singing a lot. That's a big part of, for me of the enjoyment of Mass, but it's nice to have that. And a couple of announcements are, there is an announcement here for the blood drive. It's packed. There's, there isn't any space left, uh, which is nice. Uh, so there, uh, that's on Wednesday. We do, however, still, we're looking for a couple of volunteers to kind of be greeters. And you can see that on the, on the main holyfamilychurch.com events of the week. And you, there's a, uh, you can click right into the Sign Up Genius if you would. I think we're looking still for two people to be greeters. Drive through confessions 5 to 6 p.m. in front of the old chapel. Or when the weather changes, we'll probably just go in the chapel. 5 to 6 p.m. Wednesdays is going to be pretty much standard for now on. Uh, I get a lot of people from 5 to 6. They're coming off work or something. But... A lot of people come at that time, and also every uh, Saturday, 3.30 to 4.45. That's pretty much going to be standard, though, unless I'm out of town. There's also going to be next week a live stream rosary, 7 p.m. on Thursday, July 9th. And I um, hope you have a good day. I, I keep saying at the end of every week, one more week down for COVID. <laughs> one more week done, and uh, bit by bit, you know, eventually we're going to look back on this and say, wasn't that an odd time? And then we'll kind of forget about it. <laughs> Hope you have a good day. And guess who's right by your side to give you rest? The Lord's in your corner. Mary and Joseph and all the saints are in your corner. All your loved ones who have gone by are in your corner. 
the church is in your corner, you have a pastor who likes you very much, just remember you're never alone. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. This Mass has ended. Let us go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.